Hi, I'm Pastor Mike, and I'm the associate pastor here at York Minster Presbyterian Church in Yorktown, Virginia. And um, the book that I want to share with you today is called The, the Story of Jumping Mouse. Sometimes it's called The Legend uh, or The Folk Tale of Jumping Mouse. It's a Native American folk tale, um, and it's a story about an adventure. Um, what I love about this book book in particular, besides the amazing story, is the artwork. This is by John Steptoe, and he both tells the story and does the amazing drawings in here. This is all done in pencil, just a pencil. And to get all those beautiful shades and shapes the way that he does, well, I just think that's pretty incredible, and I'm thankful he used his gift this way. So, the story of Jumping Mouse. Once there was a young mouse who lived in the brush near a great river. During the day, he and the other mice hunted for food. At night, they gathered to hear the old ones tell stories. The young mouse liked to hear about the desert beyond the river, and he got shivers from the stories about the dangerous shadows that lived in the sky. But his favorite was the tale of the far off land. Here, look at that. It's amazing. The far-off land sounded so wonderful, the young mouse began to dream about it. He knew he would never be content until he had been there. The old ones warned that the journey would be long and perilous, but the young mouse would not be swayed. He set off one morning before the sun had risen. It was evening before he reached the edge of the brush. Before him was the river. On the other side was the desert. The young mouse peered into the deep water. How will I ever get across, he said in dismay. Can you find the mouse? Don't you know how to swim? called a gravelly old voice. The young mouse looked around and saw a small green frog. Hello, he said. What is swim? This is swimming, said the frog, and she jumped into the river. Oh, said the young mouse. I, I don't think I can do that. Why do you need to cross the river? added the frog, hopping back up on the bank. I want to go to the far off land, said the young mouse. It sounds too beautiful to live a lifetime and not see it. In that case, you need my help. I'm Magic Frog. Who are you? I'm a mouse, said the young mouse. Magic Frog laughed. That's not a name. I'll give you a name that will help you on your journey. I name you Jumping Mouse. As soon as Magic Frog said this, the young mouse felt a strange tingling in his hind legs. He hopped a small hop and, to his surprise, jumped twice as high as he'd ever jumped before. Thank you, he said, admiring his powerful new legs. You're welcome, said Ma Magic Frog. Now step onto this leaf and we'll cross the river together. When they were safely on the other side, Magic Frog said, you will encounter hardships on your way, but don't despair. You will reach the far off land if you keep hope. If you keep hope alive within you. Find the mouse? How about the big dragonfly? Jumping Mouse set off at once, hopping quickly from bush to bush. The shadows circled above, but he avoided being seen. He ate berries when he could find them, and slept only when he was exhausted. Days passed. 
Though he was able to travel quickly, he began to wonder if he'd ever reach the other side of the desert. He then came upon a stream that coursed through the dry land. Under a large berry bush, he met a fat old mouse. Let's see if we can find that fat old mouse. See the butterfly? Find the butterfly? What strange hind legs you have, said the fat mouse. They were a gift from Magic Frog when she named me, said Jumping Mouse proudly. Humph, said the fat mouse. What good are they? They've helped me come this far across the desert, and with luck they'll carry me all the way to the far-off land, said Jumping Mouse. But now I'm very tired. May I rest here a while? Indeed you may, said the fat mouse. In fact, you can stay forever. Thank you, but I think I'll only stay until I'm rested. I've seen the far-off land in my dreams, and I must be on my way as soon as I am able. Dreams, the fat mouse said scornfully. I used to have such dreams, but all I ever found was desert. Why go jumping about the desert when everything everyone needs is right here? Jumping Mouse tried to explain that it wasn't a question of need, but something he felt like he had to do. But the fat mouse only snorted again. Finally, Jumping Mouse dug a hole and curled up for the night. The next day, the fat mouse warned him to stay on this side of the stream. A snake lives on the other side, he said, but don't worry, he's afraid of water, so he'll never cross the stream. Oops, I've got to show you the picture. Can you find the fat mouse in this picture? Can you find it? Life was easy beneath the berry bush, and Jumping Mouse was soon rested and strong. He and the fat mouse ate and slept, and then they slept and ate. And then one morning, when he went to the stream for a drink, he caught sight of his reflection. He was almost as fat as the fat old mouse. It's time for me to go on, thought Jumping Mouse. I didn't come all this way to settle down under a berry bush. Just then, he noticed that a branch had gotten caught in the narrow of the stream. It spanned the water like a bridge. Now the snake could cross. Jumping Mouse hurried back to warn the fat mouse, but the mouse hole was empty, and there was a strange smell in the air. Snake. Jumping Mouse was too late. Poor old friend, he thought, as he hurried away. He lost hope of finding his dream, and now his life is over. Find the snake? Big, scary snake. Jumping Mouse traveled through the night and the next morning. He saw that he had reached a grassy plain. Exhausted, he hopped towards a large boulder where he could rest in safety. But as he got close, he realized the boulder was an enormous shaggy bison lying in the grass. Every once in a while, it groaned. Jumping Mouse shivered at the terrible sound. Hello, Great One, he said bravely. I am Jumping Mouse, and I'm traveling to the far-off land. Why do you lie here as if you're dying? Because I am dying, said the bison. I drank from a poison stream, and it blinded me. I can't see to find tender grass to eat or sweet water to drink. I will surely die. Find the bison and jumping mouse. Look at that bison. Jumping Mouse was sad to see so wondrous a beast so helpless. When I began my journey, said Jumping Mouse, Magic Frog gave me a name and strong legs to carry me to the far-off land. My magic is not as powerful as hers, but I'll do what I can to help you. I name you Eyes of a Mouse. And as soon as he had spoken, Jumping Mouse heard the bison snort with joy. Jumping Mouse heard, but he could no longer see, for he had given the bison his own sight.
Thank you, said Eyes of a Mouse. You are small, but you have done a great thing. If you will hop along beneath me, the shadows of the sky won't see you, and I will guide you to the mountains. Jumping Mouse did as he was told. He hopped to the rhythm of the bison's hooves, and in his way, and in this way, he reached the foot of the mountains. See the bison? Can you see a tiny little jumping mouse? There he is. Look how big that bison is. I am an animal of the plains, so I must stop here, said Eyes of a Mouse. How will you cross the mountains when you can't see? There will be a way, said Jumping Mouse. Hope is alive within me. He said goodbye to his friend, and then he dug a hole and went to sleep. The next morning, Jumping Mouse woke to cool breezes that blew down from the mountain peaks. Cautiously, he set out in the direction of the coolness. He had not gone far when he felt fur beneath his paws. He jumped back in alarm and sniffed the air. A wolf! He froze in terror, but when nothing happened, he gathered up his courage and said, Excuse me, I'm Jumping Mouse, and I'm traveling to the far-off land. Can you tell me the way? I would if I could, said the wolf, but a wolf finds his way with his nose and mine will no longer smell for me. What happened? asked Jumping Mouse. I once was a proud and lazy creature, replied the wolf. I misused my gift of smell and so I lost it. I have learned not to be proud. But without my nose to tell me where I am or where I'm going, I cannot survive. I am lying here waiting for the end. Jumping Mouse was, su was saddened by the wolf's story. He told him about Magic Frog and Eyes of a Mouse. I have a little magic left, he said. I'll be happy to help you. I name you Nose of a Mouse. Can you find the wolf? How about the mouse? Now, normally a mouse and a wolf wouldn't be that close together, would they? The wolf howled for joy. Jumping Mouse could hear him sniffing the air, taking in the mountain fragrances. But Jumping Mouse could no longer smell the pine-scented breezes. He no longer had the use of his nose or his eyes. You are but a small creature, said Nose of a Mouse, but you have given me a great gift. You must let me thank you. Come, hop along beneath where the shadows of the sky won't see you. I will guide you through the mountains to the far off land. So Jumping Mouse hopped to the rhythm of the wolf's padding paws, and in this way he reached, he reached the far off land. I am an animal of the mountain, so I must stop here, said Nose of a Mouse. How will you manage if you can no longer see or smell? There will be a way, said Jumping Mouse. And then he said goodbye to his friend and dug a hole and went to sleep. So I can show you the picture. There you go. What's that? Can you tell what that is? Oh, Jumping Mouse is sad. See the tears? The next morning, Jumping Mouse woke up and crawled from his hole. I am here, he said. I feel the earth beneath my paws. I hear the wind rustling on the leaves in the trees. The sun warms my bones. All is not lost, but I'll never be as I was. How will I ever manage? Then Jumping Mouse began to cry. Jumping Mouse, he heard a gravelly voice say. Magic Frog, is that you? Jumping Mouse asked, swallowing his tears. Look how big that mouse is. Yes, said Magic Frog. Don't cry, Jumping Mouse. 
Your unselfish spirit has brought you great hardship, but it is that same spirit of hope and compassion that has brought you to the far-off land. Find the frog. Can you see the frog? And this is just a picture, beautiful picture. Find the frog. Jump high, jumping mouse, commanded Magic Frog. Jumping mouse did as he was told and jumped as high as he could. And then he felt the air lifting him higher still into the sky. He stretched out his paws in the sun and felt strangely powerful. To his joy, he began to see the wondrous beauty of the world above and below and to smell the scent of the earth and the sky and living things. Jumping mouse, you heard Magic Frog cry. I give you a new name. I wonder what his new name will be. You are now called Eagle. <clears throat> I think that's the end. Oops. Nope. One more page. Here you go. And you will live in the far off land forever. Isn't that funny? He became the same things that he was afraid of. He conquered his fear. So what does that story have to do, do you think, with where we are right now? It took Jumping Mouse a very long time to go from his home all the way to the far off land. And on the way, he met a fat mouse and a bison and a wolf. And he could have been afraid of all of those things. But instead, he had courage. And because he had courage, he had opportunity. And he was unselfish. He gave the magic he had been given away to the other animals. What magic can you give away today, do you think? Maybe you've never really thought about it, but you have magic in you. And you have gifts to give. Now, you see... I still have on this sticker. This sticker means that I gave blood today. And what that means is that some very nice people helped take some of the blood from my body and put it in a special bag, and then it will go to help somebody who's sick or hurt, like somebody who's been in a car accident. Um, those kinds of accidents happen, and those people need some more blood to fill up their bodies when they lose it. As smart as human beings are, we have not figured out any way to make more blood other than what our bodies make. And so when I have opportunity, I give my blood so others can live. What can you give away? You're probably not old enough yet to give blood, but you can give drawings like the drawings in this book. Maybe you're not as quite as... Uh, as gifted as this particular artist yet. But I will tell you one thing, a drawing from a child makes grown-ups smile more than anything else in the world. You could brighten somebody's day by drawing a mouse for them or maybe something else. Or maybe just being kind to your brother or your sister or other members of your family today when maybe you had gotten in a fight or you you just aren't sharing very well, maybe you could share nicely and be kind, and that could be a gift that you would give. So think about it. Opportunity happens when we least expect it, and in ways we are usually not ready for, but your heart can always be ready to give when that opportunity arises. So let's pray together. This is a pray after me prayer. Dear God, Thank you for all the gifts you give us. The ones we can see 
the ones we can do, and even the ones we can't see, like being kind and helpful and unselfish. Make us ready to do the good things you want us to do. Amen. Thanks for hearing this story today.